Boardwalk Empire is a HBO television series that aired from 2010 to 2014, created by Terence Winter and produced by the likes of Martin Scorsese. The show is set during the Prohibition era in the United States and revolves around the activities of organised crime, politics and law enforcement in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Johnny Torrio and Al Capone are significant characters in the series, portraying real-life figures from the Prohibition era. Torrio, portrayed by actor Greg Antonacci, is a key character in the series, depicted as a prominent Italian-American mobster and one of the early leaders of organised crime during the Prohibition era. He was a mentor to Al Capone and played a significant role in shaping Capone's rise to power. Torrio is depicted as a shrewd and calculating crime boss, known for his business-minded approach to organised crime. He establishes a close relationship with Enoch Nucky Thompson, the main character of the series and a political figure in Atlantic City. Torrio eventually passes on leadership to Al Capone, setting the stage for Capone's notorious criminal career. One could argue that Torrio is one of the few winners of the show, retiring to a life of luxury and relaxation, going from Europe to New York and back, away from the violence and mayhem of gangland Chicago. Al Capone, portrayed by Stephen Graham in Boardwalk Empire, is a central figure and becomes a major character as the series progresses. He is one of the most infamous and influential gangsters of the Prohibition era in real life and is similarly depicted in the series. In Boardwalk Empire, Capone starts as a low-level enforcer and muscle for Johnny Torrio. As the series progresses, Capone rises through the ranks due to his ruthlessness, strategic thinking and ambition. He eventually takes over from Torrio as the head of the Chicago outfit, becoming one of the most powerful and feared mobsters in American history. Al Capone is involved in various criminal activities including bootlegging, gambling and violence. He is shown to have a complex personality, capable of charm and charisma, but also known for his violent temper and brutality, and a sensitive relationship with his son. In season 4 of the show, amid tensions between Torrio's outfit and the Northside gang, Northside rival Dino Banyan is killed by Al Capone's men under the order of Torrio. Torrio was wary of being drawn into gang wars and had negotiation agreements over territory with O'Banion, but after encroachment from the north side and being conned in a brewery raid, Torrio loses his temper and gives the okay on O'Banion's death. Later, unknown assailants fire shots into one of Torrio's buildings, almost killing Al Capone, and shortly after, Torrio himself is subject to a hit. In a scene homaging the Godfather, Torrio is ambushed outside of his home and shot at point-blank range several times, but incredibly, he survives. Calling Capone to his hospital bed, Torrio makes the decision to hand over the reins of his empire to his protégé, announcing his retirement. Today, I wanted to discuss the possibility that Al Capone himself is the man who tried to have Torrio whacked. It sounds crazy that this would even be a possibility, but there are enough clues in the show that allow us to make a case for this. For sure, though much of this storyline did indeed take place in real life, there's very little to suggest Al Capone had anything to do with the Torrio hit. History tells us they were close, had maybe even a father-son-like relationship almost, and Torrio was already easing out of the outfit's operations by the time of the hit. A quick glance at a Wikipedia page tells us, on Saturday, January 24th, 1925, in retaliation for the O'Banion assassination, Northsiders Jaime Weiss, Vincent Drucci and Bugs Moran attacked Torrio as he was returning to his apartment from a shopping trip with his wife. A hail of gunfire from Weiss and Morgan greeted Torrio's car, shattering its glass. Torrio was struck in the jaw, lungs, groin, legs and abdomen. Moran attempted to deliver the coupe de grace into Torrio's skull, but ran out of ammunition. Drucci signalled that it was time to go and the three Northsiders left the scene. The severely wounded Torrio survived. There is nothing to suggest that Capone had anything to do with it. It appears Jaime Weiss set up the hit as revenge for O'Banion. But the show plants the seeds in our heads, and there may have been even a secret war going on between Torrio and Capone. A rivalry, mutual frustration, but also tangible violence assassination attempts against each other, hiding in plain sight in the show. There is a clear disconnect between the two as early as season 1, the young unruly Capone playing a prank on a furious Torrio with a cigarette, for example. <laughs> it's a 
a joke. I'm sorry. You're not sorry. You're a sorry fucking moron. I thought you'd have a laugh. I'm in the middle of a fucking meeting. But that's a small thing, highlighting Capone's immaturity at the time more than anything else. Then there's the young pups of Boardwalk, Jimmy Darmody, Capone, Charlie Luciano, doing deals with each other behind their bosses' backs, guys like Torrio, Nucky and Arnold Rothstein. But even overall, Torrio is constantly having to rein in Capone's erratic behaviour, and this is never more prominent than in season 4, which is also where Capone's drug use becomes more prominent. Capone's brother is killed, and Torrio is furious when Al kills a cop in response, Capone acts more and more autonomously and independently, getting called out directly by Torrio in one scene. Yeah, I'm moving Ralphie up. Oh, you are? So as I can run a distribution more hands on. And what will I be doing? Come again? Well, while your hands are on the distribution, what will I be doing? I'll squeeze you out of nothing. You wouldn't squeeze me out of my own operation. That is very generous of you. I know you like to relax. We had discussions, you and me, about the future. When you got back from Italy, Expanding my role when you retire. But I ain't retired, Al. No. no. Right. Of course. I know that. Someday. Eventually. The man is clearly frustrated, but so is Capone. From his side of things, Torrio is more interested in talking about Italy after his return from vacation, talking about relaxation and peace between rivals. He's not as interested in Dean O'Banion and the North Side as he used to be. Torrio literally walks out of a meeting with O'Banion, letting Capone take care of things. Al would see him as out of touch, going soft, but his loyalty stopped him from making any actual moves against Torrio. Really? Torio had reached another level of spiritualism that the other characters in the show can't contemplate. His Pompeii story shows as much, but that's a story for another day. Elongated stares behind each other's backs and exchanged glances are plenty in season 4, with it feeling like this storyline is going to explode somehow. And it does. Torio conveniently leaves early in one scene. A phone rings, and shortly after, the assailants make their move against Capone. Capone is shaken, and he says, Lucky for Johnny, he left when he did, huh? Huh? It's an offhand remark, but the camera lingers, and the insinuation is clear. Torrio's later reaction to the hit attempt is very nonchalant, and Capone is clearly furious with Johnny, either because he thinks he did it, or because he's frustrated with his laissez-faire attitude. You think so? Sure, if the old Banyan thing... Who else could it be? Yeah, I'm sure you're right. It's interesting that these scenes work perfectly both ways. It could simply be that Al is annoyed with John's behaviour, because of course Torrio is tired of the life, he's slowing down, he appreciates Italian culture, he stops to smell the roses. These concepts are beyond Al, who's all about money, power and revenge. John's going through a change. That's an undercurrent of the Chicago storyline, but dialogue and events are perfectly aligned to suggest Capone wanted Torrio out of the way and try to have him whacked, and John was shrewd enough to suspect it. Or at least Al's coked up enough, paranoid enough, to think that Torrio wanted him gone and okayed his murder, which is another interesting discussion. But the counter-argument, and perhaps the more logical line of things, is that if Torrio was going to kill Capone, he wouldn't shoot up one of his own businesses haphazardly to do so. His nonchalant reaction to the shooting was more of a showcase of how detached he now was, mentally, from the Chicago warfare. Was there a secret war going on between Torrio and Al, concluding with Al sending in some goons to take Torrio out? Even the scene at the hospital plays it ambiguously. It works completely as Torrio handing over power to Al, as he says, this is a young man's game. He knows Al wants it, he's capable, and Torrio doesn't have it in him anymore. He tried to keep the peace, but now the reason for Capone's push for a more aggressive approach to the north side has reached Torrio's doorstep, literally. The trick is to stay alive long enough to cash out, as Eunuch Johnson, the man Nucky is based on, is alleged to have said. Torrio tells Capone, you win kid. I'm not going to fight, I'm out of your way. This again works both ways. 
he could be insinuating that he knows what Capone did and he's going to bow out of the game, or he's simply saying he doesn't have the fight in him and Al can take over. You win, meaning Al inherits the operation and goes after the north side the way he wanted to. Torio's dialogue is, by the way, very similar to what he's alleged to have said to Capone in real life. It's all yours, Al. Me? I'm quitting. It's Europe for me. Capone doesn't fight the decision. He clearly is itching for it, but that doesn't mean he wants him dead. Torio certainly isn't as convinced as we see from this scene in season 5. I still can't swallow right. A few crumbs from a biscotto will send me into a choking fit. Small price to pay. If only I knew what I was paying for. I'd always assumed O'Banion. A little closer to home. Capone moved on you? Let's just say whoever it was, I got the message. Most fellas in this business, they get the retirement papers straight from the grim fucking reaper. So whilst the history of the events might be more straightforward, the show plays it ambiguous and insinuates there may have been more to the Torio attempted hit. What do you make of this? Do you think Al Capone in the show had anything to do with Torio shooting? Do you like the ambiguity? If you think Al Capone did try to whack Torio, do you think it was because Torio tried to have him killed, or was Al simply coked up and paranoid? Let me know in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.